to game two between Kyo Dadu, aka Zeddy, and Dreamer. Upper left hand corner, we have Zeddy starting as the red Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we have Dreamer starting as the green Protoss. And this is on Tau Cross, a three player map. Because it is a rampless map, I am almost wondering if Dreamer is going to opt. And again, that, that was what is great. Game one, we saw the 973. So you know when I'm saying, okay, 973 build, that is what Protoss are afraid of and have been patterning a lot of their builds around re recently. Getting that additional early scouting information is so critical. But here's the thing. Oftentimes, Zerg players will mix it up, still open up three hatch initially, make it look like they're going a 973 and opt for Mutalisks instead. At which point, the cannons are built in the wrong location at which point the match swings wildly against them. So Protoss have been going for a lot of Zealot Lake Speed builds, primarily. Things along those lines. And they're still, the meta's very much in flux. And also I feel like Zerg are oftentimes what they're doing as far as their style of builds. 973 tends to be the bread and butter these days, I believe. Seeing Zeddy opening up with a nine pool, which I believe is safer on Tau Cross. Again, because it is a rampless map, that it's not just safer, but it also provides early pressure pressure opportunities. Going for a drone trick, which is why we're dropped on the assimilator, canceled the drone to get one more drone snuck out. We are seeing a gateway first for Dreamer, so he wants to apply Zealot pressure, and he's going to get this initial probe scout inside of his opponent's base. Could be micro versus my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, micro versus micro here. And I'm almost curious if when Dreamer sees. We'll see if he, he plops down a second gateway and wants to go full pressure. It would be a very delayed two-gate build. Or if he's going to opt upon seeing this spawning pool and seeing these initial Zerglings being built, Overlord is catching that front door, if he's going to add on a forge. He does have a pylon near his front. Zeddy has the scouting information. This is six Zerglings. Some probes might be able to come into the fight here. But basically, map control goes a tad into Zeddy's favor here. Also building another grouping of Zerglings, so definitely wants to be aggressive, is moving out with an initial drone. Probe is there to try to provide blockade, which is gonna serve two functions. One, it's gonna allow these Zerglings, it's gonna force these Zerglings to stay at home base a little bit longer, which is gonna allow additional defenses to be built. Another pylon, interesting, before Forge, for Dreamer, he's getting a second Zealot out. Now the Zerglings starting to flood down. I believe the second Zealot will be there in place, so could come down to some micromanagement. This probe has gotten a lot of damage on it. And again, that early scouting can be extremely valuable. Doesn't even see the gas go down. Overlord hovering overhead. This is a wide open gap. Probes coming off the line in case they need to blockade. And it looks like the Zerglings already able to sneak through for Zeddy. Four Zerglings making their way across. And Dreamer with an uncharacteristic micro mistake, he's still setting up to go ahead and plop down that Nexus, but four Zerglings, that's a lot of Zerglings, are making their way into the main, and this is prompting two more Zerglings to be built by Zeddy. The probes gathering up, trying to drone drill, another probe down. Things are looking grim for Dreamer in his main. Perhaps showing some nerves, one Zealot has split off. More Zealots are being, are remaining at the front just in case more Zerglings come across. And it looks like more Zerglings are grouping up, so this Zealot trying to chase down Three Zerglings. It looks like it has been able to clean up one, but Zeddy at least able to get some initial annoyance and damage done against Dreamer. Is that probe gonna? No, probe not able to do any disruption there. Zeddy trying to co uh, control a lot. Another Zergling sneaks through, but it has just got two health. That probe going up, getting the kill. Nice micro. <clears throat> and now we see the Nexus warping in. Two Overlords overhead, though. A little bit dangerous territory, to be honest, and a forge finally warping in for Dreamer. He really did not want to build that forge. Taking a really long time to do so. Where are the Zealots? The Zealots actually skipping everything, making their way towards the main. More Zerglings coming across. This gap is still open. They're working... I don't think he realizes that that gap's there. Now, more Zerglings able to flood in. The Zerglings also engaging on that probe line. More probe kills. And Dreamer's economy is extremely slowed down here. So these Zealots need to get some sort of damage done. That looks like they've killed a handful of Zerglings. Keep in mind, Zeddy did dedicate a lot of larva to these Zerglings. So he's still sitting at 10 drones comparatively. He's got that 12 o'clock base up and running, and it is action on both sides. It looks like probes coming off, trying to attack there. Drones pulling out to the natural expansion in this base. Still two overlords overhead, and the cannon warping in, and I'm not sure if Zeddy is aware of it. That could be devastating. So it looks like... <laughs> 
as we're regrouping, oof, not a not a great drone location. So both players having some trouble with their economy to start. Overlords are going to be able to scoot out at this stage. Natural expansion is up. A bit of economic damage on both ends, but Zeddy continuing to peel out a lot of Zerglings. Three Overlords are wide walking their way across. How many Zerglings is this? So this is looks like 10 Zerglings against three Zealots. Sometimes the Zerglings can end up in a superior situation. And more Zerglings being built by Zeddy. He's just basically playing three hatch Zergling at this stage. Still not grabbing any gas. So he wants to get this done on Zerglings alone and really test Dreamer's front door. Dreamer getting those Zealots pinned in. Unfortunately, not able to get the best around. One Zealot silent trying to back up to that additional Zealot. This is just overwhelming amounts of Zerglings. When you have large numbers and get that concavity, they make short work of those Zealots. Nine Zerglings still stand in more flooding out. However, Dreamer has to know with that amount of Zerglings that this front door is at risk. Maybe wants to place, yeah, another cannon. He's got another cannon warping in. We've got five drones there. We've got four drones momentarily there. Another Hydro Sten being placed. The forge being pounded away at. The Zelt's trying to peel off the line. They have to be careful not to open that gap. Waiting for this cannon to warp in, which might provide some defense. And honestly, this forge is going to be critical at what's going to be a, most certainly a bust from Zeddy to follow this up. Are we going to see an additional cannon drop? No additional cannon. The forge is gone. Front door is wide open again. More Zerglings flooding through. Three Zerglings, or just two Zerglings getting through, and they're fairly damaged. And that Overlord taking some hits overhead. Probes. Battle probes coming off the line, getting an additional kill. One more probe down. And the Zealots, and a probe actually, making their way across the map for Dreamer. Dreamer realizing he might be in a touch of trouble. That's, And this is very typical of Zeddy style. We're going to apply that pressure, keep applying that pressure, and try to sneak drones behind it. Dreamer wants to slow this economy down. There aren't any Zerglings left. This is <laughs> the probe actually getting into the fight here. He's got a fourth hatchery and a fifth hatchery on the way, so he wants to transition into five hatch Hydra. Drone drilling to try to mitigate this damage. More Zerglings being produced. And keep in mind, just the latent economic damage there. Nice drone drill, so Dreamer not getting a lot accomplished. Rebuilding his forge on his front. He's actually even in drones overall, which is in workers overall, which is not the exact situation you want to be in. Stargate's up, Citadel Dune is up. I got to give advantage to Zeddy. Eight drones at his third. Seven drones at his natural expansion. Pretty well saturated across the board. One gas up, which is plenty to transition to a large Hydralisk force. And he can go just for a flat contain and play for a long-term macro game. Second, a simulator being dropped down for Dreamer. And so it looks like he wants to go into a more a tech opening. Second gateway plopping down. So maybe some high Templar to follow this up. Level 1 weapons and Zelt leg speed now being upgraded. This is very late for both of these upgrades. And Zeddy moving forward with Hydralisks already. Dreamer in a lot of trouble. Corsair is moving out to provide scouting, and he doesn't even need it. Now he knows, of course, basically Hydralisks are at his front door. I'm actually a little surprised he still opted for the Corsair and isn't getting level 1 weapons, and instead didn't skip it. Cannons being placed immediately to deal with this. Hydralisks pushing in. The Forge, that's forcing cancel weapons 1 on the Forge, and this gateway most likely going to get taken out as well. Zeddy is making short work of what he can on this front. And I think he's going to go for a bust in not too long from now. Also producing another 10 Zerglings. Pressing forward. The Zealots doing a decent blockade. Probes pulling off the line to try to do some damage. Cannon is warping in. The Hydralisks initially having to back off. Dreamer's Corsair is able to get an Overlord kill. It looks like. Maybe do a little bit of Slow the economy down a little bit. That's putting Zeddy in the red. Gateway warping in, but this is still another large grouping of Hydralisks and Zerglings. Five cannons on the front. No Zealots. Dark Templar being produced. There is an Overlord here to deal with that Dark Templar. Usually this can be an indicator is when that Overlord comes forward that this is going to be an aggressive all-in attack. That Gateway taking a bit of damage. The Hydralisks 
pushing once again. Probe's coming off the line again. One cannon down. And I don't see any Zealots. This is just a probe defense. Two cannons remaining. The Zergling's starting to flood in. The probe's at least able to get on the unit on top of the attack units at this moment. But a lot of the probes losing their lives as a result. The Dark Templar are moving forward. The Overlord is not there. But a single Dark Templar does not look like it is going to be enough to stem the tide. A gateway trying to produce... I, I don't think it's going to be able to even produce that Dark Templar on the front. The Dark Templar being peeled off. That pylon was powering all... Of, well, it looks like two of those gateways. That's down. A High Templar is going to be produced out of this gateway. And it looks like Zeddy has done it again. Taken two quick matches with busts. Here's the thing. Even if... Dreamer survives this. He's taking such a huge economic hit. Yeah, there's GG. He's taking such a huge economic hit. But I can't imagine he'd be able to, to pull back in this match. So this is a best of seven. First two games, very convincingly going to Zeddy. Very much back and forth early. And honestly, I was expecting Dreamer to get the better exchanges in those early micromanagement fights. But instead, Zeddy ending up ahead in the overall... Early game micromanagement. So Dreamer down 2-0 in his attempt to reclaim, well, to claim his BSL championship. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game three.